How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 14 in the final regular season game of the year is upon us. We will play at home against a 4-7 and seven Northern Illinois. And this game is huge. It seems like every single game uh, that goes on in this season continues to be bigger and bigger. Now that we've beaten Ball State, almost certainly we've locked our spot in the MAC Conference Championship game. We're now number 16 in the country, and we have right now 11 prospects visiting on this game. NIU is not a high overall team. They're not doing all that well. Uh, their offense, of course, doing better than ours, but that's something that we have come to be accustomed to. Um, who have they played? Why have they not done so well? 28 and 31. They almost beat a, a decent Nebraska to start the season. Actually, a lot of close games. One score game, one score game against Temple, against Ohio. Oh, wow. Bowling Green, Akron. They did win a good one against Toledo. Uh, another overtime. Just wow. A very, very close season for, for Northern Illinois. This is just insane. So close to being nearly undefeated, except for the Western Michigan game. They did not have a loss uh, that was out of reach, which is pretty spectacular. But if you're a... a fan of northern illinois or, or a player or their coaching staff that's gonna be pretty disappointing again recruiting out the wazoo this week a uh, huge list of players ready to commit we forgot to take our boy arthur robertson off the the board which is a shame really wish we could have got him but i think that we actually have yeah two more guys ready for visits uh steve vinson the big fullback that would be huge if we could pick him up we're in the lead with him now and austin sims who we are in the week with, or who we are in the lead with as well. Unfortunately, Auburn has the visit scheduled, so he's going to have to go in that week 15 bye, which kind of sucks. But Steve Vinson can come and make it 12 players at the NIU game that we will need to impress. So we're going to have to be just firing on all cylinders to make sure that this goes well. Uh, again, I'm just going to start or continue to remove points from guys. Derek Bentley, we'll take out all but 50 from him because I want to have some points to offer some scholarships. Pretty similar situation with George Smith. Uh, start to get some other guys even more locked in. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. We'll pop back in when we're ready to give some scholarships. And if we're lucky, we might actually be able to uh, get some insta commits. I mean... I wouldn't be against it. I've rearranged a few points, mostly trying to give guys that are a little bit lower percentage locked uh, the maximum so that we can hopefully get them wrapped up or mostly committed before the offseason. And maybe we can steal some stuff because we do have a few players that we're now in the lead with that we can offer scholarships to. Again, just going with level one in the Insta commit, anything else might be a little bit too much. Uh, offering scholarships. There's 50 points. I think we had four players that we could offer scholarships to. It's not a high chance that we get an insta commit. We've only gotten one this year, but would be great. Jeff Fontenot. Oh, snagged the wide receiver. This guy's good. Only 100 points in front of Florida State, and he's 76 overall, I believe. Uh, decently quick by the senior season. He'll have some legs. 84 route running is going to be really big for the team. 92 carrying. Who knows? Maybe with Steve Vinson, we throw him in uh, as a running back. Maybe a return man. Although he might be a little bit slow for that. But certainly on like a jet sweep, that is massive. And it gives us some more points for recruiting as well. It's starting to feel like this team or this recruiting class is coming into its own. And well, the remaining 400 points this week. We're going to give to a decent running back, Brant Jean, Brant John. Who knows? Uh, he's not very locked. Maybe we can sway him into coming towards us. We're the only team to offer us, him a scholarship thus far. Um, so if we could pick him up uh, in the offseason, that would be pretty big. I think it's worth the 400-point investment this week to kind of see how it shakes out. Well, if we will stand any chance of somehow sneaking into a backdoor playoff spot, we're going to need some chaos, so we'll be rooting for a lot of upsets. There are so many undefeated teams left here at the beginning of week 14, which is not good. Three of them with buys here in the top 10, Purdue, Army, and Georgia Southern not playing anybody. Oh, Army still has to play Navy, but beyond that, uh, the other two are already at 12 wins, so they'll have back-to-back -back buys. 
And hopefully they lose in their conference championships. Uh, Auburn plays Alabama, so we will be, for once, rooting for the Crimson Tide to win the Iron Bowl. Florida, we want to lose to Florida State. Definitely not going to expect that to happen. Houston potentially could lose to SMU. They did just lose to Nitro Drive's ECU. At least a, a different, a parallel universe ECU. Notre Dame very much could lose to a number 11 USC. I'm not sure how much that helps us, but I mean, I kind of think that a, a number 11 USC would need to lose. Hawaii could lose to Fresno State. Uh, we are sitting at number 16th in the coaches poll. I think the BCS poll matters a little bit more to us, and I'll expect us to be... Yeah, about the same. So 16th there. Realistically, we need to be top eight if we want to have a chance at making it into the playoffs. So a lot of places to go. We need teams to keep losing. And I think that we need to blow out Northern Illinois. Uh, not certain that's going to happen, but we'll try our hardest here. The Huskies are a 72 overall, just like us, which is great news. Uh, they have a 67 offense, which means the defense should do great, and a 76 defense. I'm expecting us to be able to manhandle them, but I've said that multiple times this season, and it certainly has not happened. So we will just, I don't know, pray, hoping for the best. Uh, and I guess even eh, it's a home game. We Our final home game of the season, we cannot wear uh white so yeah i guess we're just gonna go with the standard homes and for northern illinois i don't know if they have anything spectacular that i want to see them wear they have a ton of away alternates so we'll just see which one they get at random uh, and they're gonna go with the white out so uh i don't know I i've got to feel confident but we'll see i am coming off of a little bit of a vacation so maybe i'm a little bit rusty haven't played the game in a while certainly I haven't taken the time to warm up, but who knows? Maybe I'm so bad at the game that that actually helps us. Now, I said offensively they looked better, but uh, it's not by much. Points-wise, they're scoring one point more per game, and they're getting more total yards, but they're still not good either. Uh, they're barely better than us getting passing yards. That's three yards per game more, and they are running the ball better. But defensively, uh, we look dominant in the, this matchup. So hopefully our good defense matched up with their a bad offense is a match made in heaven for us. 12 prospects visiting today. Yeah, certainly I'm going to try to pass for 250 yards and rush for 100. I don't know if I can reliably do the rest of them. Uh, but as long as we get the win, that's great. Top players still on hot streaks. And for them, their top players for once are actually worse than ours. We have not seen that a whole lot. Only one player above 80 overall for the Huskies is fantastic news for us. Uh, Graham's still out with the torn pack for four weeks. They have a tight end out, which will help because their offense is already going to be struggling. So the defense will have a little bit more of a break there. And then a right guard, probable with a strained knee. Things are looking good for us, especially with the home field advantage. But we'll see if we can finish out the regular season with a nice, comfortable victory. Somehow, we continue to get fantastic weather this season. Back into Rynearson this evening. A little bit cloudy and certainly cold. But no precipitation expected for the game. Northern Illinois will win the toss. So we will be starting with the football. Just a gentle two mile an hour breeze. We really couldn't ask for much better weather all year long. As Poole is back to return. And I'm expecting this one to be a good one. The blocking starts pretty solid. And Poole will give us great field position to start this opening drive out there near the 40. We'll go to the bread and butter to start off this first drive with the offense. Durham Finch running it up the middle has worked great all season long, and we will continue to lean on him in this game. I do think that passing for 250 could be difficult, um, but you never know. If it's like the end of last game, where we just have to give up some points to pick it up, I think that might be worth it for the recruits. Two great carries that time. Good blocking allows Durham Finch to get a first down. And now it's time for that patented triple option. Just got to make sure I don't make the mistake and uh, throw the ball away. Oh, that should have been 25 yards for Stan Williams. Tackled from behind, saved a huge one. And let's see if we've lulled this bad defense to sleep. Actually, their defense is the better unit. But let's see if we've lulled them to sleep at all anyways. Second and five, stepping back to pass over the middle is Wilson. It's John Wilson. 
21 yards downfield on the first pass attempt of the day. An accurate ball by Albert Johnson there. Just nearing the end zone ever so quickly on this drive. This play is going to get us inside the red zone. Durham Finch still not down. Stands back up and picks up another five yards on the play to get us almost inside the 10. That was just phenomenal effort. Tons of hustle there from the starting running back, and we're going to let him take a break. As a result, Jerome Simmons takes it. He's got a lot of space, and that's a first and goal for the Eagles here. This drive is going really well. Five yards to pay dirt. Now, can we just punch it in? We're going to go with the read option. Allow Albert to become a little bit of a threat. They ignore him. And I just don't want him to take a shot. So we'll slide down. Take the second and goal. There is a very real chance that he would have scored on that. But the last thing that we need on this season is for our bad quarterback to get injured and have to deal with. And even worse, back up in Durham Finch. Well, he just waltzed into the end zone. And just like that... Two and a half minutes into the game, we are into the end zone with a dominant drive. I'm absolutely going to expect the defense to be just as dominant. Again, this is a, what, a 68, 69 overall offense that we're facing off against. If they aren't able to tee up and just launch these guys, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. So first and 10, what can we do? Just going to try a little bit of basic offense. Here's the running out towards the edge. It's actually a decent carry. Uh, Arnold Freeman falling forward. He got six yards there. And right off the bat, it seems like the Huskies are running an option. So we're going to dial it up and get aggressive. Don't want to allow that. Got to try to get the stop. This one, a handoff up the middle. And we've stopped it. Third and two, a chance to get off the field with a three and out. How about this third and two? What do we have in the tank on this one going to be a handoff. Fox was there to slow him down, but he doesn't get the tackle. And it's just not quite enough. So they do move the chains there. Almost a phenomenal play from the cornerback, uh, but he just can't quite finish it off. First and 10. Now that's going to back him up as they fall start. And maybe that'll be what the defense needs. Well, we're probably going to see our first pass attempt now. So we'll see what the uh, pass coverage looks like on the day. And at this point, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would appreciate it if you left a like. Uh, but I don't know. After that play, maybe we wait a little bit until we do something good because I just got absolutely bamboozled by the tight end. I got hit with the shimmy shake and I got sent to the shadow realm trying to bring pressure. We hit the quarterback just unblocked on that blitz. We forced him to throw it incomplete. So their first pass is completed because of my bad user. Second one's incomplete because it was okay. And now it's definitely going to be a run out towards the edge. This triple option is doing way too much. They pick up another first down on the ground there. Going to have to start kind of calling uh, my shot on where these guys are going. We'll see what we can do. Calling it a run to the right. It's going to be a play action. Quarterback steps back to throw. Walters out of position. And it's caught for another first down as NIU is just continuing to drive. That was a well-timed play action there, catching us a little bit off guard, trying to bring pressure, forcing the quarterback to throw it away again. And, oh, that feels good when we can get to him pretty much unblocked. Second and 10. I would be content holding these guys to a field goal. We just do not want to let them into the end zone on the day. As this is a QB keeper, and the blocking is impeccable. Couple of... Uh, accidental hit stick hits uh, sent some guys flying nowhere near him and that's a first and goal for the Huskies that is not how you want to see this one going calling this a run to the left we'll see what's going to happen it's a handoff and we stuff him in the backfield coming in with the safety to make a huge hit that'll give us a second and goal to contend with we'll see what we can do there Walters you know, in the flat trying to defend over the middle it's caught and they'll get just a couple of yards back to that original line of scrimmage, but it'll be third and goal. Not certain what to expect here, if I'm being honest. Uh, five yards to go. They're going to step back to throw. Over the middle, I see it. We just didn't have to do anything. Throw it short, and he steps out of bounds. That brings out the field goal formation for the Huskies. Almost no chance that we block this, but you never know. Do I send it? No. Oh, I was offside. That hurts. Maybe they decline it. Oh, thank goodness. Blocking the kick would have been nice, but oh, it was just 
a little bit too risky of a decision there. Didn't fully commit either, so we didn't even benefit really. They decline, and we just give up three points. It was a really long drive though. Definitely some bend, but don't break in action there as we will go five wide essentially, stepping back to throw. Nearing the end of this first quarter, I'm just heaving it deep. We'll see what Mitchell can do. If it's not picked off, he comes down with it, avoids the tackler, and Mitchell is into the end zone. 71-yard touchdown reception on the first play of the drive. Albert Johnson really going to give us a chance to get to that 250 passing yards as he has 91 on his first two attempts. And that one was absolutely beautiful. There's no doubt in my mind that that was the most impressive deep ball we've seen from Albert all season long. Couldn't have come at a better time either as now the special teams is getting involved in the big plays. Well, I fully expected... Uh, oh, wow, I just saw something big on the bottom. Anyways, I fully expected... Uh, I don't know, our drive to end the first quarter, but now NIU has it. The score that I had been distracted by was a big one for us. Number 10, Cincinnati lost. So some chaos starting as the final play of the quarter does happen here. Quarterback takes off, and that's a big one. Jackson misses the tackle, and this is a huge carry across the 30. We've given up 97 rushing yards on a drive and a half as the first quarter comes to a close. We are up 11 points, but I just, I'm not confident that the defense is going to do a good enough job right now. They, they got to really step it up. I don't want to see another first and goal the rest of the game. Monkey's paw is definitely going to curl now, and we won't see first and goals because they'll just score on big touchdown plays. A toss out towards the edge is going for absolutely nothing. I think that was Walters getting in there and stopping him a loss of five. Blair's the one that gets credited with the tackle, but not the one that made the initial contact. Great spot for the defense now. Second and 15. Great start to the second quarter using the home field advantage. To their advantage is this one thrown short, which is great because I just got absolutely burned on a route again. If you had another second, it's a touchdown. Third and three. Huskies have kind of abandoned the running they were seeing earlier. and We brought a lot of pressure and it worked. I did not think we were going to get the sack. They had the counter corner route on the right wide open, but no time for the quarterback to get the pass off and the defense will get that stop. A decently long field goal attempt now. 47 yards. They hit one from 21. We'll see what we can do here. Uh, That looks short. It's no good. Maybe it would have been fieldable, but I did not have pool back there to return it, so that's not great. As Alabama leads Auburn in the Iron Bowl, the chaos that we needed is coming to fruition right now. Let's see if Lightning can strike twice in the same spot. Mitchell being sent deep as we step back to throw. I'm going to launch it. Albert Johnson put that one way out in front. We needed it almost to underthrown, and that's an incomplete pass. Kind of feel like maybe he got a little bit too hyped there that we were giving him another chance to throw a deep bomb. This one, a run to Durham Finch Jr., and it's a great carry to give us a more manageable third and three. And just because I'm going to say that this is four down territory. I want this to be a dominating win. So that means we need points and we need lots of them. Durham trying to stretch it to the edge, get some stiff arm cheese and then is able to roll forward. So there's an 11 yard carry to give him 45 so far. And let's just try to get the 100 rushing out of the way early. Another triple option, Jerome Simmons and Stan Williams. The two options we can go to. We'll get the pitch out. Jerome breaks a tackle. It's not going to be a great run, but making something out of nothing there is the backup. Certainly not upset with that play. Uh, how about a play action? Second and five. They're not bringing you a whole lot of pressure. Over the middle, getting rid of it. There's Palmer, of all people, coming down with it. And Brian gets us 17 more yards. The offense looks like a well-oiled machine today, which is not something we're accustomed to seeing from this team. How about a run up the middle? Ooh, they want to bring pressure, actually. Let's uh, let's send Mitchell deep again. He's going to have the one-on-one. -on -one. Can we get the playoff in time? Having to just huck it up. Mitchell in the end zone comes down with it. Absolutely burned by his man. And Sean with the touchdown catch. 30 yards downfield is looking good. Albert, a weird throw there. Came out of his hand a little bit awkward, but absolutely beautiful. 
I don't know what happened with the team, but it seems they've been replaced with competent football players. 21-3 to in the second quarter already. With three minutes to play, we have plenty of time to work with. All right, defense. The only thing better that they can do right now is get us a turnover. This one's going to be a run and a triple option. He could pitch it late, but why? Bob Harrell, 14 yards on that carry. Quarterback's kind of cooking us. He's averaging 17 yards per carry on his first four carries. We're going to try to bring some pressure, and it worked beautifully. Oh, that was phenomenal. If you're new here and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing as uh, they're going to throw it out into the flat. We've got them in a third and five. A great chance now to get off the field for the defense. Said that I wanted... Uh, a nice dominating win. We actually have a chance at it now. They step back to throw, expecting something bad to happen. Quarterback takes off, scrambling. He fumbles the ball. Jackson picks it up. He's still on his feet. A little spin move from the big boy. I think that's a right end who's been playing linebacker for us. There's the turnover from the defense. And with two minutes left, the offense, a chance to score 28 in the first half. We haven't seen a performance like this all season, and I am absolutely loving it. Continuing to step back to throw. We're going to go with the check down. Give it to John Wilson. He'll get seven yards as the clock will move. And Albert, five of six to start the day for 146 yards. If we don't reach 250 passing, I'm going to be absolutely shocked. Just trying to wait. Be patient. We give it to Mitchell. Just get the first down. We don't need to play hero ball here. Every yard that we get early will make it that much easier for us to close this one out. Stepping back to throw, giving it to Durham Finch Jr. He's not able to get a first down, and the clock again continues to move. And we've tried this trick play once, but we're going to try it again. The toss, quarterback throwback. We'll see if we can get it to Albert. Just having to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. Didn't quite get the blocking there. Had they not brought the pressure, I think it would have worked, but that just, uh, that didn't work. Thank goodness we got it away. Incomplete pass. Now we can actually run the counter here on third and one, and Durham can get the first down and stop the clock there. Now 55 seconds on the clock. How about a mid-screen? The wide receiver mid-screen has worked pretty well for us so far in this dynasty. It looks like it's going to work well again. Mitchell catching it. It's a second and inches. No first and goal. I'll take our first time out there. Not only is everybody on the offense performing well, but the way that we're mixing it up is honestly very satisfying. Time for Jeremy Robertson to get his first carry of the game. A fullback dive, and he fumbles the ball. Oh, that was dangerous. Terry Curtis recovers it for the first and goal, but that could have been an absolute disaster. I was 100% planning on giving the ball back to Jeremy, but uh, after he just fumbled, we got to just hand it off to the running back. Give it to Jerome Simmons here. As we let the clock burn down a couple seconds, get it to 30, just because I don't want Northern Illinois to have too much time, and Jerome actually doesn't score. Inside 20 seconds, again, still two timeouts to work with. We'll give it to Durham Finch and hope that he can get into the end zone. That doesn't look uh, all that good. He just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and this is scary now. I'm hoping Jeremy Robertson's feeling good because if uh, Durham can't get in on this play, we're going to give it to our fullback once again. Third and goal, two or 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Up the middle, Durham Finch into the end zone. Our fourth touchdown of the half. I don't think we've had a whole lot of four touchdown halves this entire season, let alone one where we hold the opposing team to three. So with just nine seconds left on the clock, we're in danger, 28 to three. Uh, I don't like that score. Hopefully we can do well. We'll see them probably just kneel out or run the football once here and then go into the locker rooms. But not to tempt fate, we'll send the coverage deep. Uh, expecting a run here actually, so I'm not going to send anybody deep because I want to just stuff these guys, make the defense look even better. And I'm going to take the time out, screw it. I want them to throw on us here. And no, they're cowards, letting the clock burn down again. No chance that they don't just run this up the middle. We're bringing pressure. I want to dominate these guys. The defense, this is their chance to do it. Let's continue to do so. Third and 12. I wish that we had more timeouts, but it's 28 to 3 at the half. Certainly nothing can go wrong, right? This is, this is completely safe. I hope so. 
Uh, offense and defense have both been phenomenal all game long. The defense kind of struggled on the opening drive, but held them to a field goal. Uh, a second drive kind of struggled again, but held them to a missed field goal and then forced a fumble and has just been phenomenal on the offense. I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've been had more praises for the offense than the defense. Albert Johnson having the game of his career so far, just throwing dots all over the place and the running game is there. The blocking is there. Uh, another half like this, and certainly they got to think about putting us in the top 10, right? Either way, we'll hope for the best and uh, get into this second half feeling confident, but hopefully not too cocky. Evening starting to come around a little bit more here as the sun begins to set, and we will kick off this second half. Oh, really had a chance to stuff him there, but missed it. Just gave up 150 yards in that first half. That's not too bad. I'll be curious to see if the Huskies go back to their original uh, offense of running the football a ton. But to start off this drive, they are going to be passing it. I gave up something, but I wasn't alone. The corner route burning us on that one. Curious if the philosophy has changed completely now that they are so far down to start the half as these guys will just be throwing it. Uh, five wide, first two plays. Bob Harrell getting in some good throws to open this drive up. Hopefully that doesn't continue. We'll just kind of step back into coverage here, hoping for the best. Unable to step up on that one. That's my bad. Chris Davis, 14 yards, and NIU starts to move the ball again. Well, let's see if we can get some pressure here on this quarterback. Seemed like we were able to do it earlier in the game. If we can continue that, that would be big. Is Oh. That was a good completion. I thought there was a chance we could jump the route. Just didn't happen. Including the throw that Durham Finch tried to get back to Albert on the trick play that we had. I think there's just been four, maybe five incompletions this entire game. So uh, either really good passing or really bad defense. I'm not really sure yet. This is going to be an incredibly risky play. Third and one. We're bringing the big blitz, trying to... Really disrupt this quarterback, not give him enough time. Pressure gets there, and we get the sack. Fourth and nine, and that's going to push him out of field goal range for sure. And if they try to go for it, we're sending Poole deep to return. No chance they make this. We do have to watch out for a little bit of a fake, but they would be foolish on fourth and nine, I think, to go for it. We know this kicker doesn't have the leg. He's not even close, so Corey Poole with a convoy. As long as there's no penalties, this is gone. There's no way that they stop this. The blocking continues. Oh, I called it too early. That's on me. Oh, uh, well, we got better field position out of it. Poole gets to stretch the legs a little bit. And now the offense will get to start the drive on the better side of the 50-yard line. Sorry if there was a noise there. I just smacked my face on my microphone. Uh, let's step back to throw. Durham Finch in motion. And I'm just going to check this one down. Give it to the backup running back in Simmons. Let him take a couple of yards, but not risk throwing interception there. And at this point, I mean, I'm not really sure. I have to worry about getting either of our yardage goals. Running it up the middle, Durham Finch falls forward. He gets a couple of yards and gives us a third and one. And since it's been a long time uh, since I posted on my little vacation, had a week off. Uh, if you guys get this video a ridiculous amount of likes within the first few hours, I will work overtime this evening to get out a second video tonight as uh, as a thank you. Don't really like setting numbers as goals on those likes, but, you know, the more the better. Uh, you know, the more the better chances that I'll uh, get off my lazy butt and get a second video done. Jerome Simmons on the counter picks up three more yards or seven more yards for a second and three and I you know for once maybe actually predicted that we would dominate in a game unless things absolutely collapse this is an absolute shellacking waiting to throw it over the middle there's John Wilson and he's got us a first and goal 10 first downs on the game now Albert 10 of 11 for 184 yards and two touchdowns that's a phenomenal game for such a low overall quarterback. This one, a handoff to Jerome. He's breaking tackles left and right. And now we've rushed for over 100 yards as a team. And as much as I would like to pass here just to get a couple more yards, I don't think it's worth it. Too much risk of an interception. So we'll give it to the fullback. And Jeremy Robertson 
Well, he redeemed himself. He fumbled on his first carry. That time he gets into the end zone. He fought forward to get on top of the pile and in. And now it's 35 to three. Like this is just dominating. Uh, special teams, okay. Kicker, I think maybe having to make a tackle there, but that's okay. And IU gets out to the 35, their best starting field position of the day. And we're gonna drop back into a little bit of zone coverage here. I'm not fully expecting the run and there is no run. Quarterback has a man wide open. That was a weird animation. Michael Charles makes the catch. Inbound, supposedly. Don't think he needed to catch that with one hand. I was praying that the refs would review that just because, but unfortunately, it's not the case. We're going to bring pressure here. He's getting it off. Pool drops the interception. Oh, Corey, you got to catch that. The pressure again, really getting to this quarterback. When we bring a huge blitz, even if he has somebody open, he's not making the right read so far, which is absolutely fantastic second and 10 they will step back to throw again coverage is okay i'm with jackson so just too slow didn't have the speed to cover the running back coming out of the backfield that's one of the things i'll look forward to next season is just having better athletes to work with plays like that won't be as common trying to bring a little bit of a blitz they get off in time and they almost picked up another first down well, unless we hit a couple of nice big tackles or sacks in a row here, I think that they're going to be picking up uh, at least another field goal. We know they're in range for their kicker now, or maybe not. <laughs> Bob Harrell had to have had somebody open, but he takes a sack. That makes it third and seven, and I'm just going to play this one for the stop. Try not to give up anything. Pick it off, maybe Walters. Ah, oh, you got to catch that, Leon. Now two dropped interceptions on the day as we will send pool back again with the uh, punt return team out because their kicker is just being punished by the coach. I don't know why he is making him try these, but it's not working out. And Corey Poole is finally gone. Oh my goodness. What will they do to stop us? Now the special teams getting involved in the scoring. As the third quarter comes to a close, it's going to be 42 to three. So long as we get this extra point, I just feel so bad for the kicker. Why does the coach keep trotting him out on the field when he knows that his guy can't make that distance? Absolutely brutal. 42 to three into the fourth quarter. We will most likely be burning the clock, but first we have to get Albert to his 250 passing yards and the way he's been passing so far today, that shouldn't be a problem whatsoever just feel like we've kicked the ball off so much. Jones, he's going to have a sore leg. The most work he's gotten all season long as there. Finally, we get a good stop there inside the 20. Four sacks, uh, a forced fumble, and a couple of dropped interceptions for this defense so far. That was just a good throw across the body on the run off the back foot. Gives up eight yards. You know, Bob Harrell, for as rough of a day as he's had, is still throwing it surprisingly well. This time he steps back to throw. Running back open. That guy's open, and he catches it in bounds. That's just bad coverage there. I think that might have been Corey Poole, which, you know, I guess maybe he's a little bit tired from such a long punt return. Or I guess it's a kick six, but you just never know. Stepping back. Coverage sack. Again, fifth sack of the day for the defense as we just are really obliterating Bob here. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, you know, you just love to see it. Second and 18, stepping back, expecting them to throw again, and they will uh, kind of throw a screen. That was terrible, and supposedly they lost two yards. I'm not so sure how that works, but we'll take it. Third and 20 now. Only one of six for the Huskies on third down today. You got to feel confident that the defense will get off the field. Obviously, we've given this up before, but this is going to be a, a chance now, I think, for Albert to get to that 250 passing yards. In true NCAA 14 fashion, they go with the slip screen on third and a mile, and they get a yard out of the play. And I'm actually not going to allow Poole to return this. We need as much uh, field space as possible for Albert. That one just barely rolled in the end zone. Ooh, that would have been dangerous if we got down to the one. But thankfully, it's a touchback. 
Now Albert can get to work. Kind of feels like we are kicking them while they're down, but that's what's needed to make our quarterback look as good as possible. <laughs> I can just throw a pick. And it's going to be almost a pick six. Oh, I, I should have known. This is a terrible formation, a terrible play call, and a terrible throw. <laughs> I got to say, it's going to be awfully difficult to keep him out of the end zone now. Pressure going to have to be coming early and often on this drive. Try to force some sort of mistake because, uh, well, we're in trouble. Stiff arm cheese, second and one inside the five. It's a real shame. All the work the defense has done just for me to throw that interception and allow these guys into the end zone. We have a chance still to stop him trying to bring pressure. We hit the quarterback as he's throwing, so it's an incomplete pass. And it is third and one. And on this third and one, I'm bringing pressure. Focus on the running back. Expect them to go to him. I'm just expecting a run. They do hand it off. Quarterback keeps it. And we're not able to get it. Eric Lane, of all people, can't even tackle him. And he goes into the end zone. Not going to hold him to single digits today. That's disappointing. And we'll just kind of hope for the best. I guess I could have returned this one. But since it's an onside kick, what's the point? Fielded cleanly by the hands team. And, well, I got to keep letting Albert throw for the recruits. It is unfortunate that he threw that interception because I'm trying to throw passes because otherwise this is the greatest game of his career. Probably that he would ever have. Good throw there to Zach Wilson as he comes down and gets 11 yards. That might put him over 200 now. Or maybe just shy, 195. So we still need 55 passing yards. We're going to the play that we just threw the pick on. So hopefully this doesn't uh, end terribly. Throwing a couple of hop routes there just to make sure. And B is wide open over the middle. Threw it a little bit late, but we find Morris. And he's got us to a second in inches. Got to say, it really hurts to just continue to keep passing when we should be burning the clock. But that's what you do for the commits as I threw another pick. That's frustrating. That's really, really frustrating. Albert has three incompletions on the day. And two of them are just stupid interceptions that I threw. Nothing to do with his own skill. This one to throw over the middle. Are we going to make this look like a, a close game? Because it was anything but. Gotta say, very frustrating that this should have been 42-3. to three, But because we have 12 guys visiting, we just have to continue this. There's a big sack from the defense. The play action not going to work when we're bringing that much pressure. And I'm curious how they're lined up. Are they actually going to think about uh, running the football? The answer is yes, and it's not going to work. They're going to lose more yards. Third and 16 here. Maybe they've given up. It would be odd for them to wave the white flag after they just kicked it onside, but then also created a turnover, but you never know. Trying to bring some pressure here. This one caught, but out of bounds. 10 yards short. Hopefully they don't go for it. Pump formation out. We're not going to worry about it. Bob Harrell has 200 passing yards, so he's actually been more successful than Albert. Um, as we're just going to take a little fair catch here with Poole. And again, just try to get 55 yards passing. Really hope I don't throw another pick, though. We do have a minute and 44 in all our timeouts to work with, but hopefully we can just get it on one play. And I'm going to go with what's been working. Throw it up for Mitchell. <laughs> Huh. Huh. I, I'm really glad they're not scoring off of these mistakes that we're making for the most part because uh, we would be in danger of losing the game. Albert has gone from red hot to ice cold in record time, which is really painful. They're going to just continue to run. Quarterback keeps it. We drop him for a loss. At least the defense is getting to show off, but this is this is frustrating. I just can't believe that they'll continue to run, so I'm awfully scared. This one trying to get him to cut it up, and it works. So Pat Scales only gets two yards. There's another third nine for them to contend with. And let's see if we can continue to stop them. I'm going to use her Carter. Try to be with the defensive end to get pressure on this quarterback early. Sounds like it's going to be a screen. I'm not sure who they're supposed to be throwing it to because that was terrible. They're going to lose a yard, and I've got to take a timeout here. Maybe they took a timeout. That's really weird. NIU, I think, took a timeout. Uh, and then is going to punt the ball away. I guess I can't complain. Allows us to have some timeouts. I really, 
really, really want to return this with pool, but I can't. I just can't. We have to get these yards. This is just not working how I wanted it to. We should have been over with this game five minutes ago, but it's just not happening. That one, almost a fumble. Albert, oh gosh, is really falling apart. Something's got to give. Maybe uh, Zach Wilson on this one. Maybe John Wilson. There's some yards. Not enough. 34 times to run it down. We got to take our timeouts here. 210. We need 40 more. And this is risky. I'm going to try a slip screen. Hopefully it works out. Looks like it could if we could just get one more blocker. If he could break a tackle. Got the first down. That'll stop the clock. 35 more. Just got to get these plays off as quick as possible. Really trying to wait over the middle. There's Mitchell. Another 10 as we stop the clock. I think we need now 24 yards as we step back. X is open. Mitchell can't come down with it. It was almost picked off. 18 seconds. This, I hate this. You would think that the recruits would have been able to see what we did early in the game and be happy enough, but that is just not the case in a game like NCAA. Curtis catches it. I got to take the timeout. We're getting close, but not quite there yet. 234 yards means we need 16 and we have 13 seconds to do it. Question is, can we? They're bringing some pressure. A is wide open. Can we get it there? Wilson gets the catch and finally it's over. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that might be the most frustrating blowout win I've ever had. 42 to 10. Should have been 42 to 3 or even worse for Northern Illinois. But we come out with the win. Johnson uh, glitching around there. Maybe out of anger, out of frustration. He does get to that 250 passing yard mark. He's still my uh, player of the game. The three interceptions weren't his fault, but Sean Mitchell gets the uh, the honors. Five catches for 128 yards and two touchdowns is pretty impressive as well. So at the end of it, 12 recruits visit. Most of them are going to be pretty happy with what they saw. We get the win. There was chaos around the country, hopefully allowing us to move up. Let's be honest, most people aren't watching Mac football, so seeing a score of 42 to 10 is going to look pretty impressive to them as well. Imagine what these stats would have looked like had we just uh, got the job done in early enough in the fourth quarter. Uh, we lose the turnover battle by two because of the uh, sheer stupidity of me trying to go for the passing yards, but we do get both things done. We outrush them. We outpass them. Um, I mean, we just dominated them in all facets of the game, except for, I guess, getting to 250 passing yards cleanly. Like, you know, they didn't do great, but they didn't throw three interceptions. So that's good for them. We know that Sean Mitchell was offensive player of the game. It's Corey Poole on uh, the defensive side. And that's because the game considers a field goal, uh, you know, fielded to try to return it for a, a kick six as a fumble recovery and not like some sort of kick return. So uh, I don't know if we would actually call Corey Poole the uh, defensive player of the game, but uh, we'll honor him nonetheless because he did end up taking that one to the house. So we end the regular season 10 and two, ending it with a nine game winning streak. But is there enough chaos around the country? We know at least one team in front of us lost and we know that Auburn could have lost the Iron Bowl, so we will sim towards that final week 15, our bye week. We'll see, first of all, how many recruits decide to commit, but also maybe how high we could sneak up in the rankings. Our fingers are crossed for at least number 10. Ooh, ooh, you left to see it. Oh my gosh, we just hauled in so much talent. A 78 overall left end, a 78 overall quarterback, who I think is an athlete, so we could put him elsewhere. A 76 overall corner and a right end. 74 overall outside linebacker, 72 overall wide receiver, a 67 wide receiver, 62 middle linebacker, and we did get Steve Vinson, the 60 overall fullback. This is, I mean, that's impressive. Big visits for other guys. I mean, Cliff Reed, we get 750 points. Same with uh, Lorenzo Pope. So, I mean, this is just absolutely fantastic. Another visit with Austin Sims upcoming this week. Just massive. A five-star, two four-stars top 10 prospect this is it's incredible it's as simple as that and we only move up one spot in the process number 15 in the country we do have tons of recruiting points which is huge uh but that's gonna have to wait until next time unfortunately uh we will see auburn 
Managed to pull it out with a win against Alabama. Can we see the box score on that game? No, nah, we could get there. That's too much work. We know that they were behind and they come back to win it by five. So that is really frustrating. And there's not a whole lot of uh, one loss team or undefeated teams anymore. So Notre Dame did use lose to USC. But like I had thought, that actually hurts us because now USC jumps up to uh, number sixth in the country. So we won't be jumping them. Houston took their first loss to SMU. Thought that was possible. They only dropped down to number 12, so we can't get over them. Uh, I mean, fair to them. They only have one loss. We have two. For Hawaii, they didn't end up losing to Fresno State, but they dropped from eight down to 13. Um, Cincinnati lost. Not enough, though just not enough three teams in front of us lost or four teams in front of us lost but we only move up one spot which is uh, it's, it's disappointing but you know chaos conference championship week you never know maybe we could steal an at-large bid unfortunately that will have to do it for this episode again if you enjoyed this one quickly destroy the like button if there is a ridiculous amount of support early on uh from when this video gets posted till the end of the night for me I will try to get out a second episode, even if it comes out at two in the morning or something. Uh, I am on the West Coast. So for some of you guys, I guess it's uh, almost guaranteed to be coming out tomorrow. But I can probably guarantee you that I will also put out another video for New Year's Eve. I hope that you guys didn't mind my little holiday break. I hope your guys' holidays have been fantastic as well. I'm excited to end this season. And by the way, one of the recruits that we've picked up maybe this week if you want to name them after yourself or maybe something a little bit meme -y, consider becoming a channel member not only do you get you know some nice perks but also uh it's a great way to help support the channel and the bigger we get the more i can do and hopefully someday soon we can maybe start to grab some attention from uh, some big creators and, and start to work with them as well Again, though, if you haven't already liked the video, subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get that for yourself as well. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.